So a one shot landscape photography shot, you're gonna capture this in one hit. So the lens that you choose is more than likely a wide angle, but it can be a larger one. And a lot of this is going to depend on your camera and the size of the sensor inside your camera. I don't mean the size as in APS-C or full frame or micro four thirds, I mean how many megapixels. I don't mind if it's, this is an APS-C, it takes, this is a shot of the Harbour Bridge and Opera House in Sydney with this camera at 10 seconds. That's a fantastic shot from an APS-C camera. So can an APS-C or a micro four thirds take a great shot? Of course they can. Brilliant photos comes out of an APS-C camera. Or it can be full frame. It doesn't matter. But how many megapixels is the sensor? If you've got a large megapixel camera, you can blow it up bigger than a smaller megapixel camera, and then you can only blow it up this big, where there's a lot of resolution and it looks nice. We'll talk about this a little bit more in post-production. So the sensor does matter, and in conjunction with the lens. So if you're using your kit lens, that shot of the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Opera House in the background was used with this kit lens, and it's fine. It does a great job. What matters here is how long the exposure is. A 10 second exposure will make the water look all warm and smooth and funky looking compared to a sharp, crisp shot where you see each of the waves. So because it was at night time, I set it at f8 because I wanted the optimum capabilities of the lens. Uh, I set it to an ISO that was comfortable with doing a 10 second exposure. And then there's the shot. So in a one shot, what's important here now is composition. The composition that you have is going to be determined by the rule of thirds, going this way and this way. So what we want is a nice top sky, let's say, a nice mid ground, and then nice foreground. The foreground, the mid ground, and the high ground are just as important as each other. You need to nail all three for the shot to work. There has to be something for the viewer to look at in all three in the rule of thirds. If there's one missing, the shot doesn't work. And then it doesn't go into your best of best. You need to nail all three. Now this is up to you. Now you may need to move. So when you come to your location, have a look. What's in the foreground? What's going on here? Is there something worth looking at in my foreground? Does it look interesting? Even if it is just water with ripples over the water, is it interesting? Here's a shot of a lake. You can see some twigs and things in the foreground. Now that makes it interesting. And then you have the lake, and then in the high ground there, you've got the sky, the clouds, and a bit of the mountain range in the background. So the rule of thirds applies. It's appealing to the eyes to look at this image. So it's up to you. If you're not in the right spot, move. Jump in your car, walk, hike, jump on your bicycle, move to a place where it looks better. You can even create the foreground so it looks good. So you can pile up some rocks, you can put some sticks together, you can do something to create something in the shot to make it your own. You can also put in a human. Here's an example of an image of a waterfall and there's a young lady at the bottom there lying on a rock. It was a part of a bigger shoot but it's called the Bridal Veil Falls and she's the bride. Here's another shot in a mountain range with a mountain range behind. Sometimes you'll be asked if you start to create these type of images please can you do that for me as well. Just a quick tip on using models, all courtesy and respect to the model, and please don't do this off the cuff. You must have planned this and done a preliminary shoot. So you've planned this really, really well. You've gone there, you've taken the shot, you know your settings, you've seen the image and you think this is gonna work. This is great and I'm gonna put my model right there doing this and this will work, I know it. And so then when you get there, you don't waste anyone's time, you get the job done, you look professional, and everyone's happy. And then the end results are really fantastic. Okay, so that's how that works. Talking of preliminary shots, it applies in all landscape photography. So sometimes, I know we're chasing the best of the best for our best of the best folder, but sometimes you need to do a preliminary shoot. And so you go there and you think, it's the wrong time of year. I need to come back in spring or in winter. I need to come back when the sun is there, not there. 
I need to come when the moon is there, not there. You can do a preliminary shoot and think, this will work when the moon's coming out of the water there. That'll work. And so then you arrange it to go there at that time of year. Enjoy the experience. We're now going to look at panoramic photography. It's the one I actually prefer out of my landscapes. So please subscribe, like, hit the bell. Let's move on to panoramics. Mm -hmm.